Today we're going to be looking at li limiting reactants. We'll be doing stoichiometry, um, but we'll be looking at two different reactants and comparing to see which one runs out first. So a limiting reactant is just the reactant that runs out first. So if you add two things together and they're reacting over time, one of them is going to run out before the other. That's the limiting reactant. The one that's left over is called the excess reactant. The limiting reactant is the one that's going to determine how much product can be produced, and we're going to use stoichiometry in order to figure that out. So let's look at a real world example that should make sense to you. Let's say you want to make a cheese sandwich. So you buy a package of bread, and that loaf has 10 slices in it, and then you buy a package of cheese, it's pre-sliced, and that package has 10 pieces in it. So how many sandwiches can you make? Well, if you're a normal person and you make a sandwich with two slices of bread, you can only make five sandwiches because the bread is gonna run out. You'll have five slices of cheese left over. So that means that the bread is the limiting reactant and the cheese is the excess reactant in this example. So let's do now one with a chemical reaction. We have nitrogen and hydrogen making ammonia for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with particle pictures first, so you can see what we're actually talking about. And I'm gonna do red for nitrogen, and we'll do green for hydrogen. So for the nitrogen, it says we have six molecules of nitrogen. Remember that our nitrogen is a diatomic, so I'm gonna draw two atoms six times. Now I'm gonna do the hydrogen, and it says six molecules of hydrogen, which is also a diatomic. So I'm gonna do six times of two atoms bonded together. So now we're gonna react them, and we're gonna react them based on the mole ratio that's given. So it has a one in front of the nitrogen, because if there's nothing there, that's assumed to be a one. And there's a three in front of the hydrogen. So that means for every one nitrogen that reacts, three of the hydrogens are also going to react. So I'm gonna start crossing them out in a one to three ratio. So for one nitrogen that reacts, I'm gonna react one to three hydrogens. Now the other one, so I still have enough left over to make more. So this time I'm gonna cross out one nitrogen and three hydrogens over there. So for that, I can make two ammonia molecules. So for our ammonia, for every time I do a one set, I'm gonna make two ammonias. So for this set, I'm gonna make two ammonia atoms. And for this set, I'm also gonna make two ammonia molecules. And since ammonia has one nitrogen and three hydrogens, I'm gonna go ahead and draw on my hydrogens. So you can see that in this case, my hydrogen is my limiting reactant. And sometimes you'll see in a textbook or someplace, they'll call it a reagent. It'll say limiting reagent. It's the same thing. Don't worry about the name. They're interchangeable. And then in this case, we have these nitrogens left over. So nitrogen is our excess reactant. And then our hydrogen, since it ran out first, it determined how much product could be made. And we were able to make four molecules of NH3 in this process. Now I'm gonna use a BCA chart to solve this problem. So let's remember that BCA stands for before change and after. So in this case, I have and remember in our BCA chart also, we can only put moles in our BCA chart. So we have to be in the unit of moles before we can put anything in the chart. Here, we're already in moles, so I can just put the numbers straight into the chart. It's saying that I have six moles of nitrogen 
and I have six moles of hydrogen. So that's the reactant side, and I'm gonna just put a dotted line to divide up the product side. And then before the reaction, we have zero product because we haven't made anything yet, so we can't have anything left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two different ratios to figure out which one's my limiting. So remember that my mole ratio is one to three. So this one right here is nitrogen. So I would put the nitrogen on the bottom and the hydrogen on the top. So I do six times three divided by one. And that tells me that I would make 18 moles of hydrogen. Now I can already see that that's not possible. I can't subtract 18 from six. So that means that hydrogen is gonna be my limiting reactant. It's gonna run out first. So I have to go the other way. Now I have to go from the hydrogen to the nitrogen. So six divided by three, well, that is two. And six minus two is four. So I can see that my nitrogen is gonna be an excess. My hydrogen is my limiting reactant. Now that I know my limiting reactant, I can go ahead and use that to find the product. So six is how much hydrogen I have, and the ratio from hydrogen to ammonia is three to two. So if I take this off, and now I wanna go to the ammonia, so I would do six times two is 12, divided by three is four, so I could make four ammonia molecules. Now, if we compare up here, you'll see we get the same numbers because molecules and moles work the same. They're the same ratio. It's just the moles is magnified up uh, by Avogadro's number. But the chart here gives us the same numbers. It's just in a more organized form than the pictures. And if we have decimals, pictures can be very difficult to draw. So now I'm gonna do the same problem again, but I'm gonna do it with dimensional analysis. So here I'm just going to do it twice. So I'm gonna start with my six moles of nitrogen and my six moles of hydrogen. And I'm gonna to go to the product both times and I'm gonna see which one makes less product. So with my nitrogen, it's a one to two ratio to my product. So one mole, of nitrogen to two moles of NH3. So that gives me 12 moles of NH3. And then my ratio of hydrogen to ammonia is three to two. So I'm gonna put the three moles of H2 on the bottom and the two moles of NH3 on the top. And when I do that, I get six times two, which is 12, divided by three, which is four. So I get four moles of NH3. You see that hydrogen made less product, so that's actually the answer. 12 can't be made, that's impossible, but four can be made, so that's my answer. So let's do a chart again for a different reaction. This time, we have two products. We only need to worry about the product that it's asking me to solve for. In this case, it's not asking me to solve, or it's only asking me to solve for CO2. So I'm gonna ignore the water in this reaction. So I've got three moles of propane, and I've got three moles of oxygen. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in my dots here to divide up the reactant side from the product side, and I know that I'm starting with zero carbon dioxide. I'm also starting with zero water, but I don't really care about that row. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and go from my propane to my water in a one to five ratio. So three times five is 15. We can already see that that's not possible. You can't do that. So that means that my oxygen is gonna be my limiting reactant. So I have to go the other way. 
So I now have to go from my oxygen to my propane. So three divided by five is 0.6. That is possible. Three divided by or three subtracting 0.6 is possible. So then I get 2.4 in excess. And because I now know that my oxygen is my limiting reactant, I can use the oxygen to get to the carbon dioxide. So that is a five to three ratio. So I'm going to take off my multiplying there, and now I'm gonna do five to three. So three on the top, and five on the bottom. So I got three times three is nine, divided by five is 1.8. So I'm gonna make 1.8 moles of carbon dioxide. And so that's the question, that's the answer to this question. How many moles of carbon dioxide is made? 1.8 which is limiting, I now know that my oxygen was the limiting reactant. So let's do the same problem with dimensional analysis. So I'm gonna start with three moles of C3H8 and three moles of oxygen. And I'm gonna set up my two different um, ratios. I have one mole of C3H8, and I'm gonna to go to the product that it's asking for. Since it's asking for CO2, I'm gonna make sure that I go to CO2, so three moles of CO2. So three times three is nine. And now I'm gonna go from the oxygen to the CO2. So there are five moles of oxygen for every three moles of CO2. So three times three is nine, divided by five is 1.8. See that 1.8 is definitely lower than nine. So that is how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced and oxygen is my limiting reactant. All right, let's do one more. I'm gonna skip that problem and I'm gonna to go to dimensional analysis for this problem. So we have this time 0 0.0.25 0 .25 moles of AgNO3 and also 0 0.55 moles of Na3PO4 sodium phosphate. So in this case, it's asking for how many moles of silver phosphate? So I'm gonna go ahead and go from silver nitrate to silver phosphate in the top one. So there are three moles of AgNO3 to one mole of Ag3PO4. So 0.25 divided by three is 0 0.083 moles of our silver phosphate. And now we're just gonna do the same thing, but from sodium phosphate to silver phosphate. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you shouldn't even need to do the math on that. You should know that that would give you 0 0.55 moles of Ag3PO4. And obviously that's way more than the other silver phosphate. So this is my answer the amount of silver phosphate that will be created, and I know that silver nitrate is my limiting reactant. Thank you. Have a good day.